Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor, and I'm a big fan of realistic lighting and creating the best visuals in Unity. And I've featured ArcVis Pro over the years, and this is no exception. It's all got incredible lighting, incredible models, and when they release new projects, I like to look around and break it down and see how they've made these awesome works. So you can take some of this advice and use it to make your games look and feel even better. And I hate to ask, but if you've got a second, support the channel by throwing a like on this video and make sure you subscribe because it helps me out massively. And if you do want to check out my Patreon, you can get over 225 different scripts, assets and projects you cannot find anywhere else. So currently I'm in Unity 6 URP and this is the scene for URP. They do have a HDRP version and a built-in render pipeline version too. And you can see the lighting and the realistic effects that are used. They have custom shaders for a lot of the different items for vegetation, different pieces of cloth and other things that you'll see around for the water. And they are renowned for doing really awesome visualization pieces with beautiful looking lighting materials. And you can get ArcVis Pro Volume 10 on the Asset Store along with their other versions too, because they've got various different places. And I'm going to run through and look over this scene and tell you what things they've added and how they've achieved this in URP. Now, just like with any scene that you've got or any project that you choose to make, you want to gather references or images to get the layout and the form of what you want and how you want the lighting to look because then you can see the way the directional light might come in and other lights for your scene. A lot of these models are created custom with suitable detail. I can look through a bunch of these meshes and they're, you know, a reasonable resolution for all of the assets that you'll see within the game. So you need to alter them in a way where they'll have a reasonable polygon count to make it look suitable for the scene that you're trying to achieve. You've got to remember that a lot of these assets, they will have their own UV map, which is used for texturing, but you need to make sure that you have custom light mapping UVs because in Unity, if I show you here and we've got this house URP, you can see that we can generate light mapping UVs based on the UV channels we've already got. Sometimes you'll get issues with these light maps and you need to make sure that in channel two usually, that you've got a copy of the light map that you'll copy over. Make sure there's no UV islands that are crossing over each other to stop any light bleeding or other pixelation issues that you'll find with your lighting. All these models will be created in a PBR workflow. So they all work in any different lighting scenario. No matter if you put this in a night scene, you drag these assets out in somewhere else. If you do get any of their packs on the Unity Asset Store, there is hundreds of assets that you can pull and use in other scenes as well. And a lot of the models, you can see they have the base color map, the emissive map, a mask map if you're using more modern versions, but they usually have a metallic or smoothness map. So it's really important to use software, something like Substance Paint or other things that will help your author PBR related materials. Once you import your assets into Unity, you need to have the idea of which models are going to be static or not to be taken into light mapping. So if we look at one of these chairs here and you can see that the LOD and we got into the fabric and if I take away this you can see the fabric on this chair and you can see that that is a static model so it'll never move so it can be baked into the light map when we use it and if you've got something a dynamic object which will move around you don't want to mark that as static and you want to use light probes instead the big thing that the ArcVis Pro team do if you look and click on any model go to the mesh render and in light mapping you can set the scale in the light map. So if you want a particular object to have more resolution and I can go into the debugging mode, this resolution is set to five. And if we select some say walls here, these are set to one. So they have much less resolution. And if I up the resolution, they will have much higher. So that anything that you want to come out in the light map to be more detailed, it's good to up the resolution if you're say having issues with a particular area. Now you can see in this project particularly, they use a bunch of different lights. They use a light probe group for all the realistic lights. If I put all the gizmos, you can see the light probe group, but Unity 6 does have light probe volumes, which can do this without having to put a whole host of light probes, but you can use a legacy system like this and any object which is real time will get the baked lighting from any of these probes if it's near it at a time. Then they do have a point light for the general light that they're going to use. And this has got a mix setting with an intensity of three. And as you can see, when I turn that down, you can see the shadows disappear in the game view. And they do have various lights in the corridor, which use spotlights and other things to illuminate these areas. And these are all baked style lights. So they're not a real time overhead. Cause you remember if you've got real time lights, it's going to be 
a taxation on your game. And there is some other areas which have their own area lights, as you can see under these parts where we can't actually see a particular light fixture. You can see a light under here. So say we're walking past this corridor here, you can just see the light that illuminates in these as if there was a light under there and still area lights for any shelving if we want to create some ambience. You can even add these area lights to a window if you want to make the effect more prominent over a windowed area. They do if you go to the lighting settings and you go to the environment, they do use a sky and the sky map is a HDRI map where you can see here and you can see that in our background. If I enable effects here, you can see the HDRI map, which looks absolutely fine when we're, when we're inside the game, inherits some lighting from the sky when you're doing your baking, so it helps you get more of a realistic scene. Just like with elements of lighting and other things like that, they do have a whole a load of reflection probes. If you're looking for something more realistic, it's good to have reflection probes in lots and lots of different areas almost every single section that you have to create the most detail and then you can make sure that these are real time or baked but the reflection probes should be on box projection especially when you're on an inside scene it can make it feel more accurate they do use the urp decal system which is really great and i do have a tutorial about showing that and you can see when these decals are close to the floor area they project the decal rather than having to use a plane on the floor and putting a transparent texture sometimes you can get some z fighting or flickering when that happens but with this you avoid that issue and you can put bits of dirt debris even trash things like that where you can make it look more realistic if you look at the scene they do use the progressive gpu light mapper with some high samples and resolution with bouncing they do use a light map resolution of 77 with a four padding they do try to use a 4000 resolution light maps but you have to be careful with that because it can eat up a lot of gpu memory if you're not careful and they do have their own custom parameters to be able to make this happen and you can see that they've got the global illumination of real time is one. They've got some of the settings along middle or lower and they have anti-aliasing sample at four because if you put that any higher, it will eat up a lot of video memory. The developers always talk about the best of maintaining quality and performance because you want to be very careful with what eats up video memory, especially if you've got very large light maps because you'll see these light maps ultimately around 1.33 gigabytes. And even if you look in the background of this, you can see that the HDRI map is in the background but there's foliage placed in very particular places here and you've got to be tactical with what lights that you do use like you can see a spotlight here spotlights point lights and other lights the directional light does come all the way in this project does use a bunch of post-processing so it's got one post-processing profile which is a global profile which affects the entirety of the scene and this has got tone mapping using ACs because it's always best at color adjustments to make the post exposure a bit brighter because sometimes it can be very dark vignette to add elements of darkness around the edges of the screen. Chromatic aberration, which I'm not always a big fan of, but can make the distortion on the edge of film grain. Lens distortion to create a little sort of fisheye effect. And different areas have different local volumes. And if you can see the green boxed outline, this, when you walk into it, will have slightly different settings and you blend between them. And I do have a full video of blending between post-processing volumes, but like they did create in Resident Evil, because it makes life easier and when you're in there if i move the character in there i can disable that volume and you can see it keeps the tone mapping as it was and adjusts the post exposure because we go outside and it gets a little bit brighter just to make sure that we have a much darker look and you will often see that change when we come out into this area and you can see that it just differs ever so slightly when we move back up and down into the different volumes that we have. I did check out this scene in one of my videos about using Unity's AI on replacing the textures and whether it can do that job. You could check that video out too. And do let me know down below if you've got any tips for creating the best lighting and the best features that you want out of projects. And be sure to check out all ArcViz Pro's awesome packages on the Unity Asset Store because they have hundreds of beautiful models in each and they have some of the most stunning work that you'll find on the Unity Asset Store to really learn from and create the best pieces. So do check out Unity Sale, all the sales on Humble Bundle. Do check out my Patreon to get over 225 different scripts, assets, and projects you cannot find anywhere else. Big thank you to Peter Steiner, Very Shoe, to Jennifer, and David for their amazing support. And a big thank you to everybody else who comes to watch the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Cheers.